There are two parts to this video. First, I'll be discussing why the UK government are telling its population to get prepared. And secondly, I'll be talking about my re-evaluation of the risks and threats in the UK and some interesting information that I've come across that you may want to be aware of. Hi, this is Everyday Prepper and welcome to the channel. First off, I want to talk about some recent articles you may have seen about the Deputy Prime Minister, Oliver Dowden, who, after releasing his update to the resilience framework for this year, he mentioned analogue capabilities that we should be retaining in this digital age. Now, what I believe he means by analogue capabilities is basically common sense, which as preppers, of course, we've got plenty of. And we know that analogue capabilities are essential. So that means talking torches, have batteries, have uh, radios as backup in case the mobile phone networks go down, the internet goes down, that kind of thing. But I actually think there's a bit more to this. The Resilience Framework has been around for quite a while now and is part of the Civil Contingencies Act of 2004, which is available freely online on the UK government website. And I'd recommend you having a read through it. And the Resilience Framework extends to all counties around the UK. Now, I know that as preppers, sometimes it's easy to have the mindset of us and them us against the government. The government are not going to be there or do anything to help us. In fact, they're going to uh, hinder us in the event of a catastrophe and it's up to us to take responsibility for our own, for ourselves and our families. You know, and, 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 that's, and that's fair enough. But on the other side of the coin, the media hasn't been particularly helpful either and portrays, quite often portrays preppers as being far right and a general nuisance. But most of the preppers that I know are intelligent, critical thinkers who are just out to make sure that they are responsible for themselves and their families in the event of a crisis. It's easy to think that the government or emergency services are not necessarily going to be there or even have the resources during a major catastrophe, uh, which is why as preppers we, we look out for ourselves. But what a lot of people don't know is there are thousands and thousands of individuals, normal civilians, ordinary people in the UK who are trained and ready to respond and help rebuild after a disaster. And they're part of a network of organisations, all kinds of organisations, including charities and other forums. So so I consider preppers to be part of that community. What I believe Mr Dowden is doing is extending some of that responsibility out to the population at large and getting people to think about their own situations and prepare for a variety of potential disasters just like we do. So although it's not being reported as this, I know it's being picked up by the opposition parties as uh, a sidestep, but I think it's one of the most responsible things anyone in, the, certainly in our government, has done in a long time in, in empowering people or just educating people that they should be preparing for themselves and not necessarily relying on the infrastructure that may not be there in the event of a disaster. And as, as preppers, we've got to realise we're, we're not some secret society that, um, you know, we're just going to go off into our own shell during some kind of disaster. There's going to be people looking to us to for support. The skills and sense of responsibility that we have as preppers would be useful for other people, surely, to help other people rebuild and manage themselves through a disaster. And I also think it can only be a good thing if the public awareness is raised and people do take on their own responsibility because they're, they're going to be less likely to be a drain or even a threat to preppers and what preppers have. So that's my thoughts on why the Deputy Prime Minister said what he did. You know, I don't think it's a kind of, you're all in it for yourselves, off you go, we're not going to help you during a disaster. I don't think it's that at all. Now, I also wanted to talk about my assessment of the current risks and threats in the UK. I do this every now and again. I'll, I'll go through, I'll have a look at some media reports. I'll have a look through the news. I mean, I'm not looking at it every single day, but I will keep myself abreast of the situation. I'll keep myself reasonably updated just so I can change my preps accordingly. And when I'm doing some research, if I see any headlines or information that I think is worth looking more deeply into, then I'll do just that. Now, I posted a video the other day about a report of a government bulletin that was to do with potentially how to deal with a radioactive incident in the UK. And it had been sensationalised by one or other of of mainstream media newspapers where they linked it immediately to the threat of nuclear war, the government must know something, uh, war is on the horizon, when it clearly stated in the bulletin that it was to do with nuclear reactors and the safety of nuclear reactors in the UK and close ones abroad uh, um, along the French coast. But I did some digging and I looked into it a little bit more and subsequently I've seen some quite concerning reports about 
a place called Sellafield, which is a nuclear, it's an old nuclear power plant that used to be called Windscale, and now it's basically a nuclear waste plant. So Sellafield is a nuclear waste plant, apparently it's the largest in Europe, and uh, what's stored there is nuclear waste from weapons programs, atomic weapons programs over the years, and also uh, nuclear power station waste as well from the UK and also Europe. God knows why we're storing stuff in Europe here because we're pretty small. But anyway, the article that I came across, the main the main report I came across was from the Guardian. They've released a story where they are alleging that China or Russia have managed to hack into the main computer network of Sellafield. Now this allegation has been immediately denied literally within a day from Sellafield on a on a government updated bulletin. But what I also found when I looked into Sellafield and and the issues surrounding it was that there have been some potentially catastrophic cracks in the infrastructure that could cause leaks. In fact, are leaking. It's leaking apparently two and a half cubic meters of uh, radioactive sludge per day. God knows where it's going. Sellafield, in response to these allegations, are saying that it's all under control and there's no danger, no dangerous radi- radiation. And, and of course, you, the first thing you think was, you know, the places in Cumbria, is it causing cancer? Is it causing problems in, in families around the area? And over the years, yes, it, it has, but they're now saying, oh, it's completely safe. But this ties in with the bulletin from the government the other day about radioactive fallout from nuclear power plants in the UK and it all seems to tie up quite nicely. Anyway, you can look this up online, just type Sellafield into uh, news on Google and there's a load of stuff and it's really quite, uh, the reports are quite damning. But what do we do about this as preppers? Interestingly, I saw that at least one scientist has been questioning the government as to whether they have a stockpile of potassium iodide tablets to give out to the general population, you know, and whether they even have any available. So with that in mind, and that was easily found online, I would imagine that potassium iodide tablets are likely to potentially become unavailable or very expensive or both very very soon. So I checked today uh, which is 6th of December. There's plenty available online. They're really really cheap. Uh, The ones I've had for quite a while just stashed. They're they're really cheap. You can get them for like £15 even less than that I think online. So I'd recommend just getting some of those, put them away in a a bug out bag uh, or a stash bag and uh, with a copy of the WHO guidance on how what the dosage information how to use them when to use them i'll put a link in the description uh, so you can print that off uh, that's what i've got in my bag just right next to the, the tablets and then once you've done that then uh, just get on with your lives you know put, keep it in the back of your mind keep uh, abreast of the situation yeah but don't get all bent out of shape over it and and f- further down the road you may want to take some some extra steps like get uh, some extra reels of gaffer tape that you could put up around windows especially if you're close to cumbria where the Sellafield site is and that's what i would be doing if i was living near a uh, power station that had those kind of problems uh, or it's not a power station but your pardon waste disposal site that had those kind of issues you, you might want to seal up your windows and uh, and have a read through the uh, the government bulletin about what to do in the event of a radiation leak because it could be that they are concerned about it uh, not a lot seems to be have been done about it but there are reports all over the internet about what problems they've had there but again no need to be really alarmist about it you know it's something that we just need to keep in the back of our minds park it and um, get some tablets stash them away in a bag with instructions of what to do and at least you know they're there although as a big fan of conspiracy theories i couldn't help but wondering if this is the government's way of uh, planning another lockdown or something where uh, you know with a, a radiation leak because radiation unless you've got a geiger counter radiation you can't smell it you can't taste it you can't see it you don't know it's really there so you couldn't prove it either way so you'd, you'd, you'd have, have to kind of comply really uh, it'd be a really good way to lock everyone down and control people um, but you know, it's just a thought if you have got a like a counter then well done because they're not cheap please don't if you haven't got one please don't go on amazon and buy a 50 quid piece of crap from china they don't work and they won't give you the readings that you really need just so anyway let me know what you think about all this in the comments and if you found what we discussed today interesting or useful please consider subscribing to the channel for more prepping discussions and ideas like this in the meantime stay prepared mm-hmm.